interpretation of our hearts who is pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So we don't often have a hellfire and brimstone sermon. Today I want to talk about sin, which is a good hellfire and brimstone topic, isn't it? <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, I want to start, though, with a story. And it's, look, it might be a true story in your family, it might be a true story in your experience, or at least it might have echoes of truth. Uh, so there's a couple. They've been married for a while, and they're going somewhere, and they're driving, and he turns left, he's driving, and she's in the passenger seat, he turns right. And eventually, the wife turns to the husband and says, Do you know where we are? No, but we're making great mileage. <laughs> There's this thing about men and, get, and asking for directions, and it's not something that all of us are good at. We are certain we know where we're going, even when we have no idea at all. You see, certainty like that is a sin. And it's a sin not against God, but against other human beings. And it's my suspicion that most of the things we would describe as sins are actually sins against other human beings. And God cares, not because God has a fragile ego, but because God loves us and cares for us and wants good for us. So the problem with certainty is it means... If I'm right, and you disagree with me, you are wrong. And if I'm certain of that, then I am certain you are wrong, and all I can see is your wrongness. And if you happen to agree with me because I am right, well then all I see is that you agree with me. You see, certainty chains us to a position and it stops us from seeing other people as human beings who are valuable in their own rights. They are useful only as insofar as they agree with us, and they are flawed insofar as they disagree with us. Human beings become tools to support our own certainty. And if someone is certain of something, we need to be a little suspicious. If we look at today's Gospel passage, Jesus is talking about when we will be with God again. And he said it will be like in the days before the floods, which is one of the uh, Old Testament Midrash stories. People did not know, but they were certain that everything was going to be fine. And it's not what they were doing that was necessarily the problem. And it's not what we do now that necessarily is the issue. But there was certainty, and that was what separated them from God. Now, I've seen a lot of people who were certain they knew when Christ was coming again. Do you remember 1999, 2000? That's it. It's the end of the world, and God is going to come for us. I mean, they were wrong, which is kind of good. A lot of good things have happened. Certainty is a problem. And if you think about it, Jesus is saying he does not know. Now, if God with us not only doesn't know the answer, but is happy to proclaim uncertainty, and if someone just down the road, Frank, Steve, whatever their name might be, is certain they know, Jesus doesn't know, and you're certain you do, we might want to have a moment of Suspiciousness around the certainty. Now, certainty doesn't necessarily mean rightness. I'm a married man. I've been certain many times and wrong before. So you can be certain and wrong, or alternatively, certain and right. So please be aware, certainty and rightness are not the same. Certainty chains us to a position and stops us from engaging in a conversation. Being right, on the other hand, 
means that we have a good understanding of the facts before us. So the problem with certainty is it means that I don't see you as fully human. I see you as a tool. Now I want to swing around and I'm going to go Catholic on you. Roman Catholic. Now I can remember studying theology and ethics um, and I did some Catholic ethics. And uh, there's this concept that they return to so often called human dignity. The valuing of a human being for who they are. And it informs so much of the ethical response to human interactions. It talks about, it, it's what the Catholic Church uses to try and figure out an ethical response to all sorts of things. Euthanasia, uh, the refugee crisis that parts of the world face. And when I got there and I heard about human dignity, my first thought was it applied to the victim. So using refugees as an example, I was under the impression that the dignity of the refugee, this person so desperate that they are willing to pay money to, on the black market to get onto a boat that may or may not sink, and that's desperate. But there was their, refu their dignity that was being impinged on, removed. Unfortunately for me, I had some very patient and wise lecturers. Unfortunately for them, they had some headstrong and difficult students. But what they got me to understand was the answer is yes and. Not yes but, because yes but means ignore what I just said. And means that and more. And they said it's not just the victim. It's also the perpetrator who sees them as a tool, a resource for money, uh, a straw man to be used in public arguments, whatever. Their dignity too is reduced. As is the dignity of those who stand on the sidelines and say, I want to help but I don't know what to do. Or those who have the job of trying to clean up the mess. Those of us who, who are so confronted that we just turn away and we don't think about it. You see, Human beings, we share that dignity. And if I reduce your dignity, if, I, if my certainty sees you as a tool, then my dignity is reduced as well. So if we are certain, we reduce ourselves to tools, to less than what we are. And we're in the first Sunday in Advent. We've got four Sundays to prepare for the most amazing sign of the love of God. That God loved us so much that God chose to be one of us. God doesn't see us as tools for doing stuff. God values who we are. That's why God chose to be one of us in the birth of Jesus Christ. And we celebrate that on the 25th of December. That's not when Jesus was actually born. If you read your Bible, it's an autumn story. And in the Northern Hemisphere, 25th of December is winter. But it's the middle of winter, which means it's the time when light starts to enter into the world again. That's why we celebrate Christmas where we do. We're celebrating light. I mean, in, in Australia, it's summer, and we celebrate flies that stick to the sweat on your face when they land. It's lovely. But we remember that God values us. That God loves us so much that God chose to be one of us. When we are certain, we close ourselves off from that miracle. We close ourselves off from that grace. And we close ourselves off from conversations with our fellow human beings. And we reduce all of humanity, ourselves included, to a tool to be used for some purpose. So as we prepare for the coming of Christ, 
Let's be careful about our certainty. But be passionate about our love of God and our relationship with God and how that informs our relationships with the people around us. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.